Jackie, let's bring in James Taylor. I call him Jim since I've talked to him for a number of years, and I can call him Jim Taylor. Uh, he is the CEO of Electric Last Mile. He joins us from the company's plant in Mishawaka, Indiana. It is the old Hummer plant. Uh, Jim, you guys now own the plant. How soon will you be able to ramp up production? And when do we see the first ELM vehicle? Yeah, Bill, Phil, it's great to see you again and uh, talk to you this morning from Mishawaka, Indiana. Yeah, we start hiring literally today as we ramp up uh, from our transaction on Friday. And the initiate, initial builds probably be this August for our pilots, but we'll be launching production uh, this fall from the plant. Jim, you were for a number of years an executive at General Motors. You know how competitive this business is, and you know that GM, Ford, soon Rivian, as well as other automakers will also be coming out with electric commercial vehicles. How do you stand out in that mm -hmm. market, realizing just how competitive it's going to be over the next year. I agree. There's a super competitive market coming now uh, forward in the EV space, uh, especially GM and Ford's uh, huge announcements for their commitments. But we have a different uh, approach to this, Phil. Let me go through a few of those for you. First is we are a pure play commercial electric vehicle company, meaning we're not in retail and commercial, strictly in commercial space. That's different than the others. Uh, second, we're launching into an empty part of the market, white space, down in the electric van, uh, so-called class one. No other competitors announced uh, from the legacy manufacturers or the new EVs. And third, we have a different business plan, a different approach to our product. We'll be using existing, reliable hardware platforms, parts from an existing OEM that's already in market and running today, allowing us to get to market much faster, but also at a much, much lower cost than the other EV startups. So all in, we have a, a different business plan. It's a unique approach. But what's similar, Jim, to other EV startups is that you announced your SPAC, I'm not sure how long ago, four months, five months ago. That's mm -hmm. when EV SPACs mm -hmm. were red hot. You could not find anybody who would not be like, yeah, let me put some money in these guys. Now you look at what's happened to Lordstown. Right. Nikola had their issues earlier this year. How do you convince investors and people who are going to be buying your vehicle, that you're not the next Lordstown, that you are not going to have the same issues? Sure. Well, part of that is our different business approach, that we require much less capital. We have a break-even point much earlier. And frankly, our plan from day one has been very, very conservative. Our volumes, our market share, our approach, using an existing plant, using an existing product. So our overall risk is much, much lower than the other entrants uh, in this space uh, from an EV standpoint. And so we think from that standpoint, our shareholders uh, have a much uh, better opportunity. It's never guaranteed, of course, for a very strong return on their investment. Jim, do you sense that skepticism that is turned in this market when it comes to EV startups? I mean, do you hear from some people, let's be honest, that, that yes. they're saying, eh, I'm not exactly sure. What do you hear back? Yeah, there's no question. I think uh, back to your last question, Phil, we hit it uh, just at the right time coming out last fall, raising our capital and then going through the, the fourth quarter and first quarter to get our final approval. So obviously we're very pleased to have obtained our, our cash, uh, executed our closing. I'm glad we're not uh, starting us back today, for instance. Um, but the feedback we get is, you know, honestly mixed. Look at it this way. With GM announcing going across the board, Ford, other uh, customers, you know, FedEx, a large, large uh, U.S. public companies announcing their transition to EVs. I think that the uh, positive part is the space is, is, has overwhelming demand. So that's good for all of us. There's the expression, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. And so having more people in this space brings all of the supply community to the table as well. But no question, there's been uh, some, some challenges in a few of the SPACs, as you mentioned. And I think as long as we stay focused, stay conservative, and stick to our business plan, we're going to be fine. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.